Today we have something different for sure. At its heart, this is really just two rolling blocks stuck side by side. So let's start with the basics. Before we can even load our pistol, we'll need to cock back both hammers. Starting with the right, pay attention to the sear, which will snag on the rearmost of two notches when at full cock. Here on the left side, we again have a hammer to cock back with its own independent sear. With the hammer's back, the breech is now free to rotate. However, it is biased into one of two positions by this spring-powered lever. As we roll open the block, note its teardrop tip crosses the lever, shifting the bias to the open position. Now we can load our two rounds and close the block, which biases back to closed. It is, however, not locked shut at the moment. Inside the block are two floating firing pins. These must be struck with some force by either of the hammers to discharge the pistol. We can do that now by pulling the trigger which tips the sear and releases the right side hammer to fall, discharging the right barrel. Pulling the trigger again causes the left hammer to fall, discharging the left barrel. Each hammer also prevents the breech block from being able to rotate, locking it shut. We must retract both before we can open the breech. Set inside the breech block is the extractor. As we rotate the block open, the extractor is still unaffected until the slot in the breech block bottoms out on a lope on the extractor, at which point it pivots and snaps the cartridges out of their chambers. The only safety in the firearm is a half-cock notch on each hammer. Both can be lowered singularly into the half-cock position. Here, the breech cannot be opened and the trigger cannot be pulled. You must recock the hammers manually to ready the pistol. The Nagant's ability to use one trigger for both hammers comes from this ingenious selective transfer lever. Its rear is sprung to project outwards to the left side of the gun. However, when the right hammer is cocked, its inner wall presses on the front of the lever, keeping its rear teetered inward. That means if the right hammer is cocked, pulling the trigger will not influence the left sear. Instead, only the right sear is tipped and the right hammer falls. When the right hammer is down, the transfer lever is no longer under pressure at its front, so the rear springs outwards to the left. This places the rear of the projection of the transfer lever in between the trigger and the left sear. Now pulling the trigger tips the left sear, causing the left hammer to fall. So in short, this system will always manipulate the right sear, but will only manipulate the left sear if the right hammer is down. Alright, that should just about cover it. Definitely one of the most unique firearms on the show so far. 